on the basis of available evidence and these expert assessments of the evidence. The scientific criteria for an influenza pandemic have been met. I have therefore decided to raise the level of influenza pandemic alert from phase five to phase six. The world is now at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. Thermal scanners screen passengers arriving in Australia. Authorities say they're doing what they can to contain the virus. Fear is running high as the death toll rises in Mexico's capital city. It all began in Mexico, where the virus has claimed more than 100 lives. This strain is different because it is spreading, and it's spreading globally, as you know. It is going to spread, as we've seen. A virus, certainly I can tell you from my own experience, the virus is spreading like wildfire. Swine flu sweeping around the globe is now in Britain. Traditional flu season is over, but swine flu seems to be spreading at a great rate. The Department of Health has calculated that a pandemic could kill 750,000 people in a worst-case scenario. 46 states are reporting H1N1 as widespread, with more than 1,000 deaths and 20,000 hospitalizations. A Japanese school in Dusseldorf is closed for now. Children and teachers are in quarantine. The fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic and we're seeing a lot of people getting infected and we're seeing that some of them are getting seriously ill, particularly people in these high-risk categories. Suddenly today in New York City, St. David's, a private school, closed after 12 percent of its 400 students reported flu-like symptoms. In New York City, 11,000 students stayed home. 16 public schools closed. Now there are new predictions for the months ahead and the figures are dramatic. And while an average case is usually no more dangerous than other flu, this strain has its unknowns. 30% of the deaths are in healthy people with no underlying problems. We are all in this together. And we will all get through this together. The vaccine will um, ultimately uh, give a very high level of protection. Only a vaccine could protect the population against a pandemic, but it would take at least four to six months to produce enough doses. All this means drug makers will have to fast track vaccine production. As a precautionary step, the CDC is working to develop a vaccine seed strain specific to these recent swine influenza viruses in humans. The antiviral drug Tamiflu will continue to be given to patients, but hopes lie with a new vaccine. Enough doses have been ordered for the entire population. We have some very good news that we got recently that first of all, as we had expected, since this is very much like the seasonal flu vaccine, that there doesn't appear to be any safety red flags or safety what issues. The scene it was this weekend as Americans tried to do the right thing. President Obama decided to declare the epidemic a national emergency of swine flu. And around the country, people were lining up waiting for hours to get vaccinations. Around the country, tens of thousands lined up for swine flu vaccines, hoping to get a shot before being shut out. No more. This is the cutoff. We're being turned away when we're told that they don't have any. My children's health at that state. We've been in line for five hours today. It's all done. One of the biggest fronts in the battle, Los Angeles County, where 20,000 doses were given just on Saturday, and it couldn't come fast enough. deadly influenza pandemic or nothing worse than a mild case of the flu. Now Wolfgang Vodard, head of health at the Council of Europe, says they got it wrong. Not only that, they were misled by the World Health Organization and unduly influenced by drug companies. Again, as pharmaceutical companies are being accused of hyping up a false pandemic. You know, there's growing global anger against the World Health Organization for reportedly making H1N1 pandemic bigger than it really was. A key accusation is that it was pushed to do so by big pharmaceutical companies who wanted to make big money by fueling fear. Health officials around the world had believed swine flu could kill hundreds of thousands, if not millions. They introduced emergency measures and spent in excess of $20 billion on vaccines. The WHO, in cooperation with some big pharmaceutical companies and their scientists, redefined pandemics and lowered the alarm threshold. 
those new standards force politicians in most states to react immediately and sign marketing commitments for additional and new vaccines against swine flu and spend billions of dollars to catch up. Never before the search for traces of a virus was carried out so broadly and intensively. Besides, many cases of death that happened to coincide with seropositive H1N1 lab findings were simply attributed to swine flu and used to foster fear. Dr. Vodag says the H1N1 vaccine was not sufficiently tested and was needlessly exposed to millions of healthy people. Not only are experts pointing fingers at pharmaceutical giants who've been pushing vaccinations and overselling their benefits while understating their toxicity. They're also attacking the WHO with the serious accusation of having misled the world with their recommendations. The COE's head of health also claims the World Health Organization colluded with major drug companies and charged or changed the definition of pandemic. And it is irresponsible, it's unresponsible uh, because people are vaccinated uh, without and uh, needlessly and it makes a damage to people. There may be side effects. So there's so many things happening and WHO is just covering all this and saying this is a good thing. It's incredible what's happening. Today, the Department of Health published a report that confirmed an association between the swine flu vaccine pandemics and narcolepsy. More than 900,000 doses of pandemics were administered around the country at the height of the swine flu epidemic. It also found that there was a 13-fold higher risk of narcolepsy in vaccinated compared to unvaccinated individuals. Health authorities have received 81 clinical reports confirming a diagnosis of narcolepsy in those vaccinated against human swine flu. But the question of compensation could prove problematic. In order to fast-track the supply of a vaccine during the swine flu epidemic, the state took on a legal liability that the drug companies normally would. This means that it may be the state, rather than GlaxoSmithKline, who manufactured the drug, that is left footing the bill.